All right, so real quick, I'm going to show you how to take this terrible image um, and make it into something similar to that or that. Um, all right, so basically, let me say a little bit about this homecoming. Um, this was done at nighttime, obviously. <laughs> um, very, very, very large homecoming. Um, there was no natural light where the actual homecoming was, and so after it was finished, I asked them to come over near these lights that were randomly scattered through the parking lot so I could get them at least lit up. Um, you might think, well, why don't you just use your flash? Um, I did for the homecoming, but I personally don't care for the look of flash. I like to um, challenge myself um, while shooting in RAW to um, not have to use flash and be able to just do something in post-processing so it looks a little bit more um, natural in my opinion. Um, of course, that's not everybody's opinion, which is totally fine. Um, now, had I not shot this in RAW, there it would not have been able to be saved as good as it was. Um, this image right here, if you go down, you can see, you know, over here, this one's a JPEG, but right here, this one is showing, um, CR2, which is a raw file on my camera. Um, if you're Nikon, it will show different. I'm not even sure what the, um, ending one is for that, but, um, for Canon, it's CR2, at least on my camera. Um, so I, let's see, I don't even remember what settings I was in. I was probably in a hurry. So yeah, okay. My settings were ridiculous, <laughs> totally not even good, um, but my camera has a super high ISO. It's the Canon 5D Mark III, so where you see here it says 25,600 for ISO. Most cameras don't go that high. Most cameras do not look good that high. As you can tell, this doesn't even look good that high, so I don't recommend that um, unless you do have a camera that is good and very um, high ISO um, because you can fix all this and I'll show you how. Um, but this was shot with my 35 millimeter. Um, I left my aperture at 1.4. Um, my shutter speed was at 160. Um, obviously there was probably better settings for this but as anybody who shoots homecomings know you're in a quick um, mind frame. The husband and wife have just come home or to you know see each other for the first time. They don't want to sit around and um, wait on you to get stuff fixed. So got to somewhat know what you're doing and then know that you have um, confidence to fix it post-processing um, and have the knowledge to do so so you can recover an image if it looks like this, which I knew when I saw it um, in the camera. Once I got it to look like this, I knew I could fix it. So I just left the settings of this probably. I don't quite remember. It was a really long time ago. Okay, so first as you can see up here in the top, um, I'm guessing that's like clouds or something, um, but the sky and anywhere it's dark, you can notice the grain a lot, a lot. Um, they're very yellow, and that is because um, the sun, the light that they were under, which you know, obviously I'm circling this one here, but there was one right, right up close by them, um, very tungsten yellow. Um, so I know that I can always fix that by going to my temperature if it's too yellow. So. Um, I guess I could start there. It's not a huge deal where you start, um, but I, I don't want to bring it down too blue because then it takes away a lot of stuff. Um, and let's see. All right, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. I can adjust it later because obviously they're st still very yellow. Um, what I like to do first, um, if you scroll down in your Lightroom and you see here the sharpening, it needs sharpened just because it's so grainy which obviously when you sharpen it, as you can see there, before, after, which you might not be able to tell. Here, let me zoom in so you can see. All right, there you go. That's without sharpening. That's with sharpening. That's close up, so obviously it looks ridiculously terrible. Far away, not so bad. But because it is so um, sharp and grainy, you wanna move up your noise over here. So I'm going to match it, the color part and the luminance part here on my noise which is exactly where the sharpening is. I'm gonna bring the sharpening up just a little bit more than that. It's getting into the red zone, so I don't wanna to go too much higher there, but um, it'll be fine once I get it all fixed. All right, so now that I've got that done, um, I wanna go ahead and work some on the black because you can really see the grain there. So um, contrast or blacks are things you can do and adjust to you know, kind of work with that. I always start with my blacks, so if you can see, the further down I go, the clearer it makes that. But however, you can see the changes it makes elsewhere. All right, so I'm just going to leave it right here for now. 
Um, shadows, if you adjust those, you can see when you move it like this, it adjusts the foreground of your light and then here the background. So you can go backwards with that if you like. Um, they're really bright, so I'm going to have to adjust with my highlights and bring those down just a tad. And I might even, no, I don't want to bring my exposure too much down. Just my highlights to kind of get rid of the lighting that's so bright on them. Um, all right, now it's still a little yellow and also a little bit of green tint. So I'm going to come here to my tint and just pop it up towards the pinkish purpley side a little bit more. All right, that's pretty, pretty purple. So I'm going to leave it right about there. Um, now, in my opinion, the blacks on their faces are still not as dark as I'd like them to be, so I'm going to bring down my black even more. Um, and probably take the highlights down just a little bit more because they're still pretty bright. Um, and they're still a little bit yellow. But I don't want to make the whole picture too, too blue. So what I'm going to do, since I just want them and they also still look a little highlighted. I don't want to affect the whole picture. I just want to paint something to fix what's on them. So I'm going to come over here, and as you can see, that's the adjustment brush tool. I'm going to click on it, and my highlights, I'm going to keep them low. Um, I might need to adjust that, but I'll leave it there for now. And I want to make them a little less yellow, so I'm going to pop that down just a tad. Maybe I'll do it extreme just so you can see the difference. And then, All right, now I want to make my brush a little bit bigger. As you can see, it's just kind of tiny. That's way too big. Hold on. Feather is the circle around it, so that'll make how hard or soft it is, and I don't want it to be too hard, so I'm going to leave it about like that. All right. So I'm going to brush it on them, and since I left it blue so you guys can really see the difference, obviously I'm going to go fix that and not leave them like Smurfs. Um, I'm going to paint this all over. As you can see, I'm not being too careful. Um you know, over by their legs and everything. All right, so there you can see, I just painted it on them and his backpack. All right, so obviously they're really blue. So I'm gonna go back over here and adjust the blue to where I want it to be. So I would say I'm gonna leave it at about that. Um, you can also adjust the green or the red tint too, if you think they're too green to, or pink or whatever. Um, I'm going to leave that one. Let's see, it was on zero. I'll bring them down to about there. Um, also, I want to play with my shadows and see, you can see how it changes them as well, like that. Um, I want to leave their shadows a little bit darker. Okay, um, if I wanted to, I can also make them a little more sharp and more noise, but I've already done so much, I don't, I want to leave those on zero. Um, I don't want them to get too noisy or sharp. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and click out of that, and this takes me back to my entire page. Um, and if you look down at her red shoes, and even like the coloring that's over here, it's a little dull, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Vibrance, and just knock it up just a little bit. That's a little too much, so I take it down. All right, now if you can see up by her hair up here, it's a little bit too yellow. I mean, she's blonde, but still. Um, I'm gonna go down here and you see where it says color. You can scroll down, and there it's on the yellow. You can change it to any of these colors and adjust any of those colors within the picture. Um, but I just wanna do yellow. So I'm gonna take it in the saturation and have it come down just a little bit. Um, I'm still going to move my blacks down just a tad. Um, I think for now, just for the sake of time, uh, I think that's probably good. Now I'm going to come over here. Oh, my highlights are already lowered, but I'm going to click on this. And this takes me back to the brush that I've already painted on. If you rest over top, it shows you where you've painted. And you can see down here I didn't, well, if I go away, but down by her bum, <laughs> you can tell, um, where I kind of didn't paint it on perfectly. So if you wanted to go over top of that, you can. It's not noticeable, as you can tell. Um, if I move my exposure down, it makes them too dark. So I'm going to leave it about what they're at. You don't want to brighten it too much or they'll look fake, like they're standing by a backdrop or something. So you don't want that. Um, I think the shadows were good where I had them. All right. 
so much for quick. This video is 10 minutes already. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. Obviously, you can adjust it. I've played around um, here. This was the one that I think I did the first time. I don't remember. I just found these in my files. Um, so you can kind of adjust them to how you want them. There's different lights. You know, obviously, everybody's are going to be different. Um, but that's how I have mine. Now, when I'm done, um, a lot of people ask about how you export. So I'm just going to show you. But first, I'm going to um, also show you another trick. Real quick, um, say you have a picture that you fixed in color and you want to do it black and white or something else, but you don't want to have to worry about exporting it and then do it black and white elsewhere. Here's what I do. Say I really like this picture and I want to make it black and white. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to create virtual copy. I'm going to click it. What it does is literally makes a copy of exactly what I just edited right beside it. Um, so say I want to make it black and white over here on my presets. Um, these are my own presets that I made. I'm going to click on the black and white one. So obviously from there, you would have to readjust according to your picture because not every picture is the same. So, um, this will take time. I'm not going to go ahead and go through and edit all that, but basically same type of deals. You can go to the sharpening, the noise reduction and all that good stuff. Um, so, but, and then if say you want to take it back to normal, click reset down here. Now here is what I wanted to show you, the so before and after. See how terrible that looks? And look at that now. Totally saved that image. Um, so it's it's totally easy, you just gotta know what you're doing. Um, didn't take too much time now on a whole bunch of images that you may have had. Um, I'll show you some other before and afters I use this for. That was the before, that was the after. Um, there was some more down here, that's a before, and that's an after, or wait. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, and same thing with down here. There's some before and afters as well. Um, all right, so exporting. I'm going to export this image per se. Right click it and click export. Now, usually, here, I'll cheat real quick. What you're doing, usually you're not just exporting one image. Um, if you are, that's how you do it. Go there, click export, export. Now say you wanna do all of them. You can go up here to edit. I can't see because there's a little button there. Hold on. All right. Edit, select all, and that'll select all your images. You can right click on any of them and click export, export, and it'll show you that it selected them all. Um, here, um, I always have mine set to desktop and then I make a folder. So, say, you know, I was wanting to title it export, which normally you wouldn't, but just, you know, you would title it somebody's name, you know, homecoming, whatever, name. Okay. Then if you want to, you can even rename the files. So I could go to homecoming name one, or no, not one, just homecoming name. And then over here, you can put your start number. So if you wanted it to start at 001, you would put that. If you wanted it to start at one, do that. You know, you can start it wherever you want. Um, I don't always do that, but you, you can if you want to. Um, if you have video files, make sure you have that to be checked. Um, resizing your image, I don't resize I because these are for my, uh, my clients' online galleries. Now, if I was exporting for Facebook or something, then I would click resize to fit and, you know, do 960 or 2048 for the long side um, at 300 pixels per per inch. Um, but I always usually resize mine in Photoshop because I don't do all of them, so I don't need to resize them all. Um, and then you leave it just like this and you click export. Um, where's the original? Okay, make sure too when you're exporting, like if you're all done, that you do JPEG um, to export because if not, if you click original, it's not going to save any of your edits. So then you click export and they'll all, it'll have a little time thing up here and it'll show you where to go um, or when you're done, then you can open up your file folder with all the files in it. So that's that, and I hope you enjoyed it.